Um, so when I was 19, my girlfriend broke up with me because I was not a born-again Christian. Now, I know we've all been there, but this was particularly <laughs> devastating to me. Um, we've been dating two weeks already. Um, and, oh, I was seriously heartbroken. I don't know why. So she invites me to church like the following week. It's a Pentecostal church. So I'm going to go. I go. And uh, at the end of the service, the pastor does this thing where like, if there's anybody here who would like to accept Jesus Christ into their heart as their personal Lord and Savior, please raise your hand. So I'm thinking, brilliant. <laughs> right here. <laughs> so I do that. I go up like I prayed for that night. Me and let's just call her Sue for now. Get back together. Um, plan's going well. I have uh, the problem is I have some friends. My previous lifestyle of drinking, partying, uh, drugs. I still have those friends, but I cut all that out, right? The drugs and all that. And I had some friends who continued to do that. So my new role now was to judge them. I'm like, all right, you got to stop doing that, that, and that, and that. And um, so at, at the same time, they were thinking, okay, you're just kind of going along with this thing to get the girl, okay? Um, and I'm trying to prove otherwise by telling them what a bad person they are. And at the time, my one friend, um, Johnny, he... He wrote um, a note inside an envelope, sealed the envelope, and gave it to me. And he said, um, don't open this until it happens. But he was the only one to know, that was going to know what happens and when it happens. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I take the note. Um, a couple months later, one of our friends comes back from college. Um, so I was still hanging with these friends. I was still go to parties. I just wouldn't do any of that stuff anymore. And we're in the car about to pull up to this party, and they're doing coke in the car. And I'm driving, and my one friend, we'll call him Johnny Number Two, who came home from college. Um, there was a little bit left on the whatever it was, a CD cover or whatever, and they're like, "George, do you want to finish this off?" So I thought about it for like three seconds. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and I finished off the coat. And a few days later, my friend uh, Johnny Number One, who wrote the note, said, "You can open up that envelope now." And it was amazing. He's, it, the envelope literally said, when our friend, Johnny Number 2, comes back from college, you will do cocaine. <laughs> so he was trying to call me out as a hypocrite and all that. So, you know, I learned my lesson. You just got to know what friends of yours are fortune tellers. And he was one. You know, so I, I you know, thinking back, so it was, it was 16 years ago. I did all that, and I threw out my, you know, Nine Inch Nails CDs, did, you know, didn't do the drugs except that one time, and all that other stuff, right? Um, 90210, though, they tried to get that out of my system, but I could not. Um, now, um, so, was I faking it then? I think so, when I reflect back on it. Um, I think over the years I've kind of learned it's not about doing the right thing. Um, it's about being accepted and loved even when you're doing the wrong thing. And I had a chance to meet my friend uh, from, I mean, it's my childhood friend. We're still friends. Uh, we haven't seen each other in about a year, so last week we got together for dinner. Um, this is Johnny number one who wrote the note. And I think, you know, the whole while, as those first few years, um, judging him for all, everything he had done or whatever, and making him feel bad about himself. And he brought up, he's like, George, you remember that time? I'm like, yeah. And um, I'm like, yeah. I said, yeah, the G I didn't know quite what he was talking about right away. So I'm like, yeah, the Jesus thing. And he's like, no, no, it's not, it wasn't about that. It was about you had this way about you where you laid, like, he put it like the law of the land on me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that. And, like, I feel like I'm learning. I'm still learning. It's, it's not, again. Not about doing the right thing, but doing the, you know, when you do the wrong thing, you're still accepted. And what I didn't get a chance to say to him, and maybe I can say it to him now, is that um, I've learned that not only from God, but also from him, where I did the wrong thing for years to him, judged him right to his face, and he still accepted me and loved me. So thank you, uh, Johnny, for that.